Hello, I'm Brian Greer, Assistant Professor at the University of Nebraska Medical Center's Monroe Meyer Institute in the Center for Autism Spectrum Disorders. In this presentation, I'll be sharing the results from our paper that was recently accepted for publication in the Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis on using multiple schedules of reinforcement to rapidly transfer treatment effects. Functional communication training, or FCT, has strong empirical support for its use in treating socially mediated destructive behavior by combining differential reinforcement of alternative behavior with extinction. In the early stages of FCT, the therapist uses a dense and often continuous schedule of reinforcement to teach the individual to reliably emit a functional communication response, or FCR, to access the reinforcer maintaining destructive behavior. However, these initially dense schedules of reinforcement must be later thinned to more practical schedules for implementation by caregivers and teachers, and there exist several methods to accomplish this. One method involves the use of a multiple schedule in which two or more unique schedule correlated stimuli alternate with distinct reinforcement schedules. For example, in the presence of a green stimulus, or the SD, FCRs result in the therapist delivering reinforcement while destructive behavior remains on extinction. However, in the presence of a red stimulus, or the S-delta, both the FCR and destructive behavior result in extinction. To illustrate how a multiple schedule can facilitate reinforcement schedule thinning, let's say the therapist initially displays the green stimulus, the SD, for 60 seconds, followed by the red stimulus, the S-delta, for 60 seconds. Across sessions, the duration of the S-delta, the red stimulus, increases relative to the duration of the SD, the green stimulus. And schedule thinning continues until a terminal schedule is reached. In this example, the terminal schedule consists of a 60-second SD period and a 300-second S-delta period. Thus, schedule thinning in this example results in reinforcement remaining available for only one of every six minutes, whereas before schedule thinning, reinforcement was available for three of every six minutes. Unfortunately, arriving at this terminal schedule typically involves several intermediate steps, gradually thinning the schedule across multiple sessions. In 2013, Betts and colleagues extended the literature on reinforcement schedule thinning by showing that once individuals readily discriminate between the components of the multiple schedule, the reinforcement schedule can be rapidly thinned without disrupting the effectiveness of the treatment. In our previous example, a good indication of this would be that the individual emits the FCR only in the presence of the green stimulus and engages in near zero rates of destructive behavior across components. Betts and colleagues' results are particularly promising because they showed that in at least some situations, using multiple schedules during FCT may enable therapists to more quickly arrive at terminal reinforcement schedules by no longer needing to gradually thin the reinforcement schedule, saving valuable time and resources. In the current study, we extended the study by Betts and colleagues by evaluating whether, after individuals reliably discriminate between the components of the multiple schedule, treatment effects can be rapidly transferred to different settings or different therapists. In study one, we conducted functional analyses of destructive behavior and used these results to evaluate FCT as a treatment. In study two, we examined the transfer of FCRs across contexts, that is across settings or across therapists, using a concurrent multiple baseline design. Finally, we extended this evaluation in study three to one child's destructive behavior. Scott's functional analysis results were representative of those for the other children. Scott engaged in higher but variable rates of destructive behavior during the tangible and attention conditions relative to those in the play condition. We changed the experimental design of Scott's functional analysis by moving from a multi-element to a pairwise design and saw consistently higher rates of destructive behavior in the tangible condition relative to those in the control condition, indicating that Scott's destructive behavior was sensitive to at least tangible reinforcement. The procedures and design of the other children's functional analyses differed somewhat from Scott's functional analysis, but a tangible function was identified for all other children. Following each child's functional analysis, we evaluated the effectiveness of FCT for destructive behavior within a reversal design. Similar to the other children in the study, Jacob engaged in elevated rates of destructive behavior when reinforcement was delivered following this response in baseline. In pre-training, we taught each child to use a vocal FCR, such as Toys Please, 
to access the reinforcer that was previously maintaining disruptive behavior using a progressive prompt delay procedure that consisted of restricting access to the reinforcer while immediately prompting the FCR. Across trials, the delay to the prompt increased systematically until the child was reliably emitting the FCR independently when the reinforcer was withheld. In this and all SCT conditions, destructive behavior resulted in extinction. We then removed the prompt to emit the FCR, which produced low rates of destructive behavior and high rates of the FCR for all children. And we then replicated those results within and across children. In studies two and three, we evaluated the effectiveness of FCT using multiple schedules across three contexts. For Corey, whose study two data are displayed here, three different therapists implemented a mixed schedule of reinforcement as the baseline from which to compare the results of the multiple schedule. And a mixed schedule differs from a multiple schedule only in that there are no schedule correlated stimuli. We chose this schedule as the baseline to compare the effects of using schedule correlated stimuli across contexts. Here's a video of a therapist implementing a mixed schedule of reinforcement with one child. Notice that the availability and unavailability of reinforcement is indistinguishable to the child. Toy, please. You can go back. Huh? What's he doing? I wonder what that is. My turn. Toy, please. Toy, please. Toy, please. Toy, please. You can go back. Ah. Here are Corey's results from the mixed FCT baseline. Corey eloped only a few times in baseline and emitted decreasing rates of the FCR in the presence of the SD and the S delta. Beginning with therapist C, we converted Corey's mixed FCT schedule to a multiple FCT schedule by adding discriminative stimuli. Here's a video of a therapist implementing a multiple schedule with a child. Notice that when the therapist displays the red wristband, which signals extinction for the FCR, that the child waits to emit the FCR until the green wristband is displayed, which signals the availability of reinforcement for the FCR. Here are Corey's data when we began the multiple schedule with therapist C. Elopement and FCRs during the S delta component remained low, and we observed a slow but steadily increasing trend in Corey's use of the FCR during the SD component, which stabilized around three responses per minute. Therapist B implemented this multiple schedule next. Unlike with therapist C, Corey immediately and consistently emitted high rates of the FCR during the SD component of the multiple schedule with therapist B. We observed the same clear and consistent effects when therapist A began using the multiple schedule. To help quantify the rapidity with which Corey began to discriminate between the components of the multiple schedule, we analyzed Corey's rate of FCRs during the SD component when the multiple schedule was implemented by the first therapist, therapist C. We use these data to set a criterion by which to evaluate acquisition of the FCR during the SD component across therapists. The asterisk denotes the session in which this criterion was met with each therapist. As you can see, it took Corey eight sessions with the first therapist, therapist C, to reach this criterion, whereas the same criterion was met in the first session of the multiple schedule with therapist B and A. These data suggest that Corey more readily discriminated the components of the multiple schedule with the other therapists after having acquired this discrimination with the first therapist. Jacob was the sole participant in study three, in which we evaluated whether the results of study two would extend to reductions in destructive behavior. For Jacob, we used a more traditional baseline in which reinforcement was delivered following instances of destructive behavior. Here are those data. 
Jacob engaged in high and stable rates of destructive behavior in this more traditional baseline condition, and he emitted low rates of the vocal FCR. We implemented the multiple FCT schedule in room B first, followed by rooms C and A. Jacob showed a gradual reduction in destructive behavior across the multiple FCT sessions in room B, similar to the gradual increases in FCRs that we observed with participants in study two. Also similar to the results of study two, Jacob showed more rapid reductions in rates of destructive behavior in the second context, room C. In the third context, room A, Jacob admitted zero instances of destructive behavior in the first multiple FCT session, and these low rates persisted across subsequent sessions. We created a method similar to the one used in study two to quantitatively assess the rapidity with which Jacob's destructive behavior decreased across contexts. In the first, second, and third contexts, Jacob reached the criterion level of reduction in destructive behavior in the fifth, third, and first sessions of the multiple FCT schedule, suggesting that the schedule correlated stimuli in the multiple schedule facilitated reductions in Jacob's destructive behavior across contexts. With Jacob and one other participant in study two, we rapidly increased the duration of the S-delta component from 60 seconds to 300 seconds. For both participants, the treatment effects generally maintained after the multiple schedule was thinned, replicating the results of the Betts and colleagues study. We observed highly differentiated FCRs when the multiple schedule of reinforcement was used during FCT for all four applications. For one participant, Jacob, high rates of destructive behavior in baseline decreased with the multiple FCT schedule. With two participants, we rapidly thinned the multiple schedule reinforcement without a significant disruption in the effectiveness of the treatment. All four applications showed that treatment effects can be rapidly transferred to a different therapist or setting when multiple schedules of reinforcement are used during FCT. These findings echo the results of several other studies that have shown that when informed by the results of a functional analysis, FCT with extinction is highly effective in treating socially mediated destructive behavior. Our study adds to the small yet growing number of studies on the importance of schedule correlated stimuli in establishing discriminative control of the FCR as well as destructive behavior. In at least some situations, these schedule correlated stimuli can allow for rapid thinning of reinforcement schedules. It can also enable the rapid transfer of treatment effects to different therapists and different individuals. Thank you.